We've all been here before. The fire alarm goes off and you ask yourself, is this a drill or is there really a fire? That is currently what the world is trying to work out. Coronavirus, or rather the reaction to coronavirus, has paralyzed areas in China. The country has taken huge steps to isolate Wuhan and other major cities affected. No matter if they stay at home or are in self-quarantine or go to hospital, you need to wear a mask at all times. Today, the UK stepped up its response. This was the last BA flight out of China. It's now suspended flights to and from the country. The Foreign Office has advised against all but essential travel to the country. The government had planned to repatriate 200 British nationals from the areas affected in China, with a flight leaving tomorrow. In the last hour, though, it's been confirmed that that flight won't take place. It's unclear why. And the details are still sketchy as to what will happen when they do eventually return. The health secretary has said they'll be isolated for 14 days. There are unconfirmed reports they'll be taken to a military facility. Australia has announced its plan to use this refugee processing centre in the Christmas Islands as a quarantine centre. China is doing its best and that helps. Of Tonight, the massive efforts China has taken to quell the virus was praised by the World Health Organization. But there's concern in some quarters about whether this massive global response is appropriate. We need to think about whether this is actually the right response proportionate to the risk posed. We don't know if these people are infected. We don't know if these people have consented to go into quarantine. And we do know that under European human rights law, which is still in effect uh, after Friday as well, that we, the response needs to be proportionate to the risk posed. This is just one of a number of strains of coronavirus. Some strains you won't have heard of because they aren't particularly dangerous to humans. Others you definitely will have, like SARS. In the early noughties, there were 8,098 reported cases of SARS. 774 people died. That means the virus killed about 1 in 10 people who were infected. Another coronavirus called Middle East Respiratory Syndrome has an astonishing death rate of over 30%. In comparison, all of the signs suggest that this strain of coronavirus is much less deadly. So far, there have been 5,974 confirmed cases. 132 people are known to have died, with a mortality rate of around 2%. But there are 9,239 further suspected cases. That would make it significantly less dangerous than has been originally projected. The question I have is, is the government responding to the actual threat posed by the disease or trying to calm a population's fear and panic, which may be disproportionate? Others believe that China and the West have taken appropriate action, better safe than sorry. The question is, though, considering the massive economic impacts these measures have on China, a key driver, of course, in the world economy, how long can this containment strategy last for? I think it's an appropriate thing to do. I think the harder decision is going to be at what point do you decide we're going to stop that. And I think the Chinese are having the same issue. They're quarantining more and more people. I think it's about 30 million now in about 12 or 13 cities. Uh, they've extended the holiday for the Chinese New Year to try and get things under control. But at what point do you say, actually, we, we, we're going to stop that measure now? And that, those, are, those are very difficult decisions. The World Health Organization will meet tomorrow to discuss whether the virus constitutes a global health emergency. Their guidance will inform governments as to how seriously their future response strategy will be. We did ask for the health secretary who chaired today's COBRA meeting on the crisis to come on this evening, but were told by the Department of Health that they were not accepting interview requests from the media. I'm now joined by former Conservative Health Secretary and former MP, Stephen Dorrell, good evening. Um, what do you make of the government's response so far? Well, I think it's actually extraordinary that the Secretary of State isn't uh, explaining uh, to, to journalists, but more important to the public, why the government is taking the decisions that it is. I think it's in their proper questions whether this is the right reaction, whether the, the, we, we all believe in the precautionary principle, we all want to be safe, 
so I think the, the, the issues are very obvious. But what we don't know is why the government is reaching the judgments that it is reaching. And the election's over now. This isn't about politics. This is about ministers discharging their public responsibilities and being accountable through journalists and through parliament to, uh, pe to people who are concerned about the level of risk that's associated with this virus. I mean, Matt Hancock has posted two tweets today to, to explain the latest with position. With great respect, I do not think uh, that a decision about an air bridge from China uh, restricting tra travel to China with significant economic consequences, significant health risks, concerns for people, uh, individuals concerned, and their families. I don't think that's appropriately dealt with by Twitter. Yeah, I mean, we looked, he's, he's only got a sort of 150 retweets on it. He's got 100,000 or so followers. Um, so, so for you, it, it's not actually direct enough, the communication from the health secretary to the people about why these decisions are being made. Democracy is a conversation. It isn't just about votes in ballot boxes on election day. That's important, of course it is. Uh, but it's about people who make important decisions that affect people's daily lives being accountable for the decisions they take. And I, I know there's a debate going on between the government and the BBC and all of that. I think when ministers make decisions of this importance, they should be accountable in public and they should explain. They may well be absolutely right. I'm not criticising the substance of the decision because, well, frankly, I don't know and well, that's what's wrong. So there's more questions than answers from, from your perspective and perhaps our, our viewers' perspectives. But here, if we look at some of the decisions of what we do know, um, this idea of bringing home people, uh, UK people from, British people from Wuhan. We've heard this evening from the Foreign Office they've not managed to do that yet. They haven't got the clearance from the Chinese authorities. But when they do go home, they're meant to be going into some kind of quarantine for two weeks, perhaps on a military base. I mean, when you gamed this stuff out as health secretary, when you were around that cabinet table, is this a regular reaction? What's really going on here? Well, it's certainly not a regular reaction, no. I think, uh, I mean, we know, don't we, that the uh, quarantine for this virus is, well, we don't actually know how long it takes to incubate. Uh, estimates range between, uh, as I understand it, between 3 and 14 days. So the precautionary principle uh, would certainly say that if you're bringing people uh, from China into the UK, where there are no uh, reported cases yet, uh, that you would isolate them when they get here. That doesn't seem, un uh, that you, seems reasonably sensible. I interviewed a professor the other day, who'd come back from Wuhan, and he tried to tell authorities he was back, found it very difficult to self-report. So it, it's not been consistent necessarily. Well, I think there's a number of issues about the operational effectiveness of policy here. Uh, we're told that the British flight can't get through, but we've seen television pictures of aeroplanes landing in the US having already started the process. Do you think um, the reaction is commensurate with the risk, though, because, of course, you know, Chinese tourism, for instance, to this country is hugely valuable. The amount of money that is now not going to be spent here and vice versa. Do you think there has been uh, the right steps taken in terms of the risk? The, the honest answer to that is we don't know, uh, because that, those are the questions that journalists and uh, public health professionals should be putting in public to the people who are making the decisions. And the thing that I'm concerned about is that key public health decisions are being taken but are not sufficiently accountable. And that, I think, and why is... Why do you think they aren't uh, being accountable, as you Well, I think it? I'm the wrong person to ask. I, I mean, I think they're not being accountable because the people taking those decisions are not, are not uh, allowing themselves to be cross-questioned. Sumnall, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Uh,